Game started. The bird. Okay, this is Norway. The bird from Norway. E4. Oh, let's see, I did a French. Let's do a Scandinavian. The French is Sicilian on a regular E4, E5 opening recently. Okay, um, he's just defending his pawn, defending his center. I think this is good. Um, what's the way to play this? I guess there's two ways to play this. One is um, with bishop g5, and the other one is with bishop to um, g7. Bishop g4, rather. Bishop g4 or bishop g7. If you play the bishop g4 line, then you're usually pushing the um, e-pawn forward, and the bishop comes out along this diagonal. So let's go ahead and do that. Block the uh, block the bishop out on the king side, but um, I'll be able to castle quickly. Yeah, I was trying to decide between e7 and d6, but it looks like this is a, a good square for that bishop. Potential, hmm, oh, maybe it just gets kicked back. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't. I was forgetting about that uh, c4 idea, kicking things back. So he can play c5 at any time if he wants to kick the bishop. But then maybe I will. Um, yeah, let's give let's give his bishop a little nudge here. And castle. I mean, c5 isn't so scary because the bishop just goes back to uh, e7 and unpens my knight, so it's doing something useful there. Um, but since he didn't play c5, I think I, I like the idea of playing c5 myself and giving myself a little more space. If he plays knight to b, knight to b5, however, hits the bishop, I drop back, and then he plays his bishop here. That could be annoying. So I'm going to start by uh, controlling the b5 square so I don't have to worry about knight b5. If he plays knight to e4, I'm not so worried about that. I can just drop my bishop back to defend my knight. And he can exchange a lot of things off at that point, but nothing too terrible seems to happen. Okay, he goes that way. I do have to be careful that I have a loose bishop here. So watch for tempo moves of this knight, I guess. But unless that knight moves with tempo, I can just exchange my bishop off. So now his knight is hanging. Check. Yeah, so he's got to do something. And he chooses to do that. So now his bishop is hanging. He can retreat the bishop to g3. That's not a bad square. Or we can continue trading. Yeah, so he goes to g3. So I still um, think I want to get in c5. But right now he would just take and it would lead to a queen trade. If I play knight to d7, I probably want to play that anyway, and then wait to see what happens. Then after c5, if he lets me play it, I can, and he takes, I can take back with a knight, and he trades queens, I can take back with a rook. Should be okay. Hmm, okay, so now he has uh, unleashed his attack on my bishop, so I need to trade out there. I, I could have uh, maybe retreated. But that's not um, my best piece, that bishop. Okay, so he's got this knight firmly cemented on e5. Um, but um, 
This c5 move does undermine that knight a little bit. Let's see, so the thing is, he can put a rick on the d file. So c5, pawn takes, knight takes, rick here. I just moved my queen out of the way. I guess I'm okay. Queen could even go to e7, I think. Um, at c5, he brings a rick here first, then I take. It seems like it's the right thing to do. I mean, it's undermining this knight. I don't want to trade that knight and have him bring a pawn forward to e5. That would that would uh, cramp my position, it seems like. So a little counter strike against the center with c5 seems in order. Is not, his knight is not loose. It's well defended by the bishop and the queen, so there's no problem with him taking in terms of uh, material. But he might be just looking for a better way to play this. He could even consider pushing forward, I guess. That would be complicated. Yeah, so he just takes. And he hits my queen. Let's think about this. Maybe he's going to hit the knight next. So I move the queen. And he plays um, b4. Now he can't drop back here because he can take it. The rook on that file. Can't do anything about that, though. At least not that I see. I may want to get out of the way so I can bring my rook over to the uh, d file here. And if he kicks my knight, I guess I have to go to, uh, yeah, he's doing that. I have to go to uh, a, a four, not the ideal square. Although it does threaten uh, c3, knight c3. And it can be supported there because I can play b5 to support the knight. Server announcement. And I still, if given the time, I still want to play rook to uh, d8 here. Challenge, challenge on the d file. So I guess he's thinking about the move rook to um, rook to d7. What do I do about that? Oh, I take the pawn, I guess. And that oh, yeah, taking taking his b pawn even defends my b pawn. So that's it's a bit lucky for me that I have that. So if he attacks the knight, I can also take on b4 as well. I don't see what he comes up with. I, I seem to have survived the opening, though. It's, it's my impression at this point. Yeah, whenever I take on b4, he can play rip to b1 and kick my queen around and get, get more pressure on the, the, the b pawn here. So maybe queen takes b4 is not ideal, but if he lifts his rook up to play rook to d7, then taking on b4 is a good good point because that's a good time to play that because he can't oppose with rook b1 anymore. But uh, yeah, given a free move, I would play rook, rook f to d8. I suppose either rook would do, but the uh, the a rook probably wants to go to uh, c8. And um, you know he can he can support this knight here with a pawn by pushing the f pawn forward. Okay, he wanted to go with the queen there. Yeah. So if I play, queen takes b4, then he has the rook to. Um, then he has rook to b8. So let's play it this way. Let's defend with the b pawn my knight really had no no squares to go to i didn't want to put it back on b i didn't want to put it back on b6 so so he puts his knight there so he just want to trade um, 
knight for bishop. Or does he want to move his knight somewhere else? Right, it's an interesting choice putting his knight there. But Check. um okay, I just wanted to trade off against the bishop. Okay. Check. Okay, so we get a simplified position here. I've got to watch for this bishop skewer. Bishop uh, h4, but uh, it's not protected at the moment, so it's not a, yet a threat. Okay, and he traded there. I was a little more worried that he might just push, <clears throat> give himself a passed pawn for the endgame over here, a protected passed pawn. He can still get a passed pawn on the queen side. He'll have an extra pawn over here, so I have to be careful. i got to keep the pieces on. I can't go into a pure king and pawn endgame. But now this knight can route around to b6 and out to c4. So it has prospects. My king is safe. And I have an extra center pawn here, so I can get an extra pawn over here. But, uh, but the outside pass pawn will win the endgame if he turns it into a king and pawn endgame, if the game turns that way. Let's see, knight c3 is possible. If, uh, if necessary, if if it seems useful, don't don't see any benefit of that. I, I can kind of like the knight b6 to c4 idea. Knight seems pretty securely anchored there. He could undermine with a4 if I do that. Let's see. Could move my queen to um, g5 to threaten rook to. Uh, Rook to d2. Would be would be nice to get my rook on the seventh rank like that. He can try and attack my b pawn. Maybe that's what he's thinking about. Bring his queen in to c6. Yeah, queen b5 protects protects the b pawn. See, the knight from b6 could also go to um, d5 as well as c4. Both those seem like good good squares. But from uh, d5, it's putting pressure there. Okay, so he went to the 7th rank. Let's see. So if I lift my rook off the 7th rank, he has check and take pawn. Okay, he's controlling this square. See, I could play knight to b2, knight b2 to uh, c4. I could go the, by that route to c4. Hmm, or I could just, um, let, let's get my queen off that diagonal. I, I think that diagonal there was kind of awkward. Hmm, wow, he really uh, used up all his time. I don't know if that's good time management here. We're only on move 25. Okay, so he's looking at c6. So I can play knight to um, play knight to c3 to defend it. Can't defend it with the rook. I could play queen here to defend it, and he could trade. I think uh, since he's low on time, I should probably try and keep things complicated here. So let's defend with the knight and attack his a pawn. Let's 
So he gave his king some lift. So I can take the um, A pawn, and then after he takes my B pawn, I can take his B pawn. So let's try that. And then just go into an end game here. Does he have any clever tactics here? <clears throat> so a pawn up end game with the Rick and Knight versus Rick and Bishop should be favorable to me. White forfeits on time. Okay, and he ran out of time anyway. Um, so interesting game. I will uh, upload this and do a postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.